Greetings fellow viewer. My main work, as you may have noticed so far, I tackle depth psychology and dark triad personalities. I share some unrelated self-help videos here and there to spice up things while I try to be original, as in my previous one on self-discipline. Today's book, however, couldn't be less on topic. I'm not teaching mind control, neither does the book. It merely exposes the tactics for self-defense purposes. We start off with a distinction. Brainwashing is straightforward, as documented and performed on war prisoners, a brainwash is an active session of physical violence intended to force someone to accept a belief that is treacherous or self-contradictory. Mind control is more potent, a subtle process at the end of which the person is certain that the implanted suggestion was thought out by himself. It can be performed at a distance, needless of violence. It is corollary to Insinuation in the Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, where a decision is indirectly alluded to, gradually blossoms in the mind of the victim, he or she believes it was their own. The major difference from brainwashing is that the manipulator here is seen as a friend or a teacher who's got our best interest at heart. Antisocial personality disorder and psychopathic personalities are one of the most lethal individuals among us. Manipulation and some of the 48 laws of power come to them second nature. Apart from cults and sociopaths, mind control is used in social communities for recruitment, in business to thrust you to buy products of no value but useful ones as well. Mind control is neither good nor bad, it's the intention behind its use that counts. Now we get to the core of this video, pseudo-personality process. The purpose of mind control can go beyond just influencing your decisions. Manipulators push people through a certain procedure to establish what we call pseudo-personalities. That is, a succession of thought loops, habits continuously ingrained which in the long run create a personality of their own. This new persona thinks and acts like the manipulator. It can be programmed to serve his needs, elicit effortless compliance, all the while the manipulated believes the benefit is onto himself. Such a mind control tactic is palpable on the micro as well as macro, like in groups, on cult members, or in one-on-one -on -one cults with a psychopathic lover. The process, befriending, unfreezing, change, refreezing and modification. Let's start with befriending. We make a first impression in seconds, we then look for evidence to reinforce it, put the person in a box so we feel more comfortable beside him or her. If we like someone from the start, we'll prime ourselves to keep liking them, disregard red flags as these contradict our initial opinion, and also because our minds are super lazy to cross-examine again and again what we believe. This puts in a better position the psychopath, for he's well able to be consistent with his behavior, makes a habit out of the attitudes he found successful in winning your good first impression. The psychopath befriends the victim by attention showering, inquiring to their lives, sniffing out insecurities, compliment, and mirror as much as they can the same qualities. The goal is for the victim to identify the psycho's presence with safety and familiarity. At this stage, notice their hyper-observant nature, they seem too curious from all angles, precisely on what makes you and what breaks you. They narrate dramatic instances, lies which purpose is to make them appear honest and humane. You feel the urge to open up in return, let out all your emotional baggage, you took the bait. Example, they will say they've been through similar traumas, had done the same mistakes or good deeds, you felt guilty at one point towards certain behaviors. You fell for some trap due to your regrettable naivete. Guess what? So do they. Your stories somehow seem identical, at least in regards to the emotions both of you experienced. You think to yourself, whoa, this fellow understands me on a very deep level. Now, now, not every person who's to let go with you is a psychopath. Sharing intimate details can and will happen spontaneously in dating and relationships without any hidden agenda behind it. The psychopath, however, shares deceptive fairy tales simply to form a strong but fake bond, often in one single encounter. Anyone who's got decent social awareness, it's not as hard for you to notice when somebody's trying too hard, qualifying themselves or be too agreeable. With a psychopath, you cannot. 
he can self-deceive and believe his own lies which is what makes everything he says appear as genuine. A normal person can be caught in a lie because they often feel a bit guilty while telling it. This gives off palpable signs. The psychopath has no human emotions, he can only mimic such emotions. And like a chameleon, can play perfect the role of a pimp today and preach another day. How to identify this phase? Psychopaths are masters at filling the gaps in or fully mirroring your personality. Ask yourself, was the friendship formed in a very short span of time? As in, you find both parties doing favors for each other from a fourth or fifth encounter, which is not typical to strangers. Does their presence seem familiar and comforting? Are they observant, weirdly and constantly curious about all the details of your life? If so, you might have befriended a psychopath. Concerning dates, excessive attention and love bombing can be discerned on the first few romantic encounters. Stop and think to yourself, why was it so quick the two of you became close friends or lovers? Be wary of individuals who showcase themselves as too similar to you. 2. Unfreezing Unfreezing is defined as the deconstruction of your current personality and priming you for a new one. They will diagnose your problems or covertly do some for you, then pretend to be saviors. They stir a need, create anxiety, offer resolutions to strengthen the bond. Say they found out you're running a mundane existence, present themselves as regular travelers and hint at a life full of venture and liberty, should you stick beside them. Now the psycho succeeded at deluding you, he is the missing piece to your life. From this example, you can see that these games are played against you not on a visible but on a mental and emotional plane. What seems to be just a friendly banter, there lurks hypnotic suggestions behind each sentence. You don't have to share weak points overtly with a psychopath to know them. When you tell someone you're reading so much self-help, this indirectly says that there's something to be improved. When you give out vibes that you're depressed, it either subcommunicates relationship or career issues. Quite common and easy to figure out. The psycho, however, can sniff out these traces of despondency even in the subtlest of gestures and verbals. They read what you mean, not what you say. Basically, unfreezing revolves around making you hyper aware of the flaws in your worldview. You start to doubt yourself and look for answers. And strangely enough, the psychopath seems to be one of the few who always knew better. Some people arrive to the cult or to the dating market, quote unquote, unfrozen. They may be going through an identity crisis already. On a small scale, like a move away from their country, on a larger one, a romantic rupture, getting fired. Dangerous cults and psychopaths realize your lowest lows lay the groundwork for easy manipulation. They seize the opportunity. Even if you're not depressed, any period wherein you actively look up advice, you're the most susceptible to identity modification. The least I could comment here, be highly vigilant of those from whom you seek answers. Psychopaths can share constructive ideas that actually work. Due to this, you don't suspect the big picture playing behind it all. 3. Change You gave a try someone's guidance and saw it's worth your time and effort. You follow them more and more. This creates a feeling of helplessness towards said person. After all, who doesn't want to regress back to an infantile state wherein we give the reins to those who seem to know better? In the meantime, we can think less and feel we're being taken care of. The psycho, also, may go as far as to befriend a relative of yours or a close friend. Now that Bob or John speaks often of their goodwill, your trust level is through the roof. Once you begin to trust, he or she will ready their seeds of ideology. You will fall for this, for they so far prove themselves to be good advisors. Each of us has core beliefs that work as defense mechanisms against self-contradictory influences. During unfreezing, the psycho's goal is to point out the flaws in this mechanism so you see his worldview as more fruitful. But once you get to this stage, quote unquote, change, they begin to actively spill in poisonous ideas into your skull, slowly but steadily changing your personality. As usual, they sandwich this poison between good advice, mixed signals. He or she now calls for adopting a new set of beliefs. 
These demands always target your self-interest, on the surface seem quite appealing, hint at solving your major life issues. It's seldom that these come across as demanding, only a keen eye for detail could notice. In simple words, they will ask a favor of you or guide you through changing your convictions without overtly saying so. Conceal these demands in the form of a higher cause to follow, another fruitful advice to take that will seemingly further your own cause, which in reality will further only their agenda. 4. Solidification, refreezing. At some point you trust them blindly, the modification process becomes a bit more blatant. They prompt you to relate your convictions with negative connotations and identify theirs as the ultimate way of living. Your personal beliefs are now the cause of dissonance and discontent, and since the central job of the mind is to sustain mental stability, it'll automatically repress your old personality for the sake of maintaining psychic balance. Your mind is tricked. The victim's personality had now turned into a shallow clone of the psychopath. This new pseudo-identity acquired is not equivalent to multiple personality disorder, for the old self had been totally repressed in this case and can no longer make its way to the conscious surface. Now other tactics used in the process of befriending, unfreezing, changing and refreezing. Modeling. There's some truth to the saying that if you want to learn something, teach it to others. Psychopaths and cult leaders encourage fresh members to recruit new people. Recruiting prerequisite the member to speak with conviction, selling the idea strengthens it in his own mind. So in this regard, be careful of what you preach, though you're convinced it's useful. Every time you give out advice, you're giving that same advice to yourself over and over. I once said that you're the dumbest when you're the happiest, couldn't be less true. Be it one-on-one -on -one with a psychopath in an intimate relationship or in a cult setting, the manipulator endeavors to present himself as the provider of pleasant sensations. He will evoke a feeling of helplessness by pointing out your shortcomings, then provide solutions in thought form or perhaps an environment full of state-altering activities, psychedelic music and hypnosis. You feel better. Be attentive to what goes into your ear on an emotional high point, example, travel excitement, breakup, divorce, new job, when someone speaks too much too fast, like me right now, <laughs> no I'm just joking, you can't think. A psycho can make you laugh your heart out to shut down your critical mind, they get to work. Long term traveling induces homesickness depression coupled with euphoria, i.e. cultural shock, you're in an altered state. You're overly happy, sad, or both alternately. Any state other than neutrality, you're more susceptible to mind control. In micro or macro cults, the victims of a pseudo personality experience intense inner conflict. These people believe wholeheartedly that they, without any extrinsic persuasion, concluded the idea of changing themselves. However, the subconscious cannot be tricked and knows that something had been repressed. Because of this, there goes an ongoing battle between the repressed true self, unconscious, and this new pseudo-identity, conscious, especially that the clone is doing things the person would never do, like commit crimes on behalf of the cult leader, sadistic or masochistic acts, but this new pseudo-personality backward rationalizes why those actions are just. Notice, if you experience depressions, bizarre allergies, nightmares or physical ailments that you were unsuccessful in tracing the cause, it might be time to turn to your most trusted friends, community leaders and knowledge sources. Not saying to place the blame on them, but be open to the chance possibility of a stealthier cause, a psychopath among them. Say it is so, these mental and physical symptoms are signs of a huge repression that happened in the unconscious, which in this case is the true self. Even after having left the cult or the relationship, the pseudo-personality is difficult to dismantle. Professional help is crucial. It's a long-lasting syndrome the person himself keeps denying until they be exposed to the cards that have been played on them. The financial and social life of ex-cult members can suffer unrecoverable losses. Some may lose even normal cognitive skills and have difficulty maintaining relationships and jobs. 
The symptoms are debilitating enough to an extent that which are often misdiagnosed as PTSD, schizophrenia or MMPD, multiple personality disorder. Befriend, unfreeze, change, refreeze and modify. This process can accelerate or decelerate relative to the number of tools that went into it. You got hypnosis, peer group pressure, reindoctrination, which is basically repeating the steps of unfreezing and refreezing for sporadically. 4. Consistency of exposure to the psychopath. 5. Emotional manipulation, which I've just discussed. Note that the manipulator can go back and forth between these four elements, befriend, unfreeze, change and refreeze. If the victim starts suspecting things, for instance, they may open up a bit more, resort to building trust, again, cover traces, perhaps, then go back to seeding. You can see now that mind control is subtle enough it goes off and undetected. I hope I did justice in exposing some of the tactics. This list is extensive but not exhaustive, so... And also, repression has been mentioned quite a few today. If you're unfamiliar with this psychological mechanism, I refer you to my series on Jungian psychology. Comment down below what you think of these tools, of this video, perhaps you've been the victim of such a process before. Give this video a thumbs up and share so more people can educate and protect themselves. Stay alert, thanks for watching and see you next weekend.